Hello and welcome to whatever it is that this is, uh, part three. This is going to be kind of a double episode, I guess, the two of these, where we're going to be making this beautiful wheel spin um, that you can see here, this water wheel spinning around. And we're also going to develop uh, the blueprint for that, the meta sound implementation of uh, various various layers of that and uh, some of the sound design as well and some sound design techniques using Isotope RX. Uh, now, the main element that we'll be covering today will be the blueprint structure of rotating an object, some of the uh, local variables that are involved, some of the conceptualization techniques that you might need and a few of the components like how to put a static mesh on a blueprint and uh, how to set up your own function. Now, uh, there's some really great, uh, really great resources that out there for Unreal Engine. And if you're looking at this for the first time, uh, this is one of the ones we can use for audio itself. Into Unreal Engine now, I've made a basic meta sound patch called Rotation, but don't worry about that too much right now. I'm going to make another blueprint class, uh, which is based on an actor, because we're going to place it in the world, and I'm just going to call it Rotator Component for now. Inside that, uh, if we move across to the components and we want to add a static mesh, this is the, the geometry that we'll want to hook up. And if, if we look across to the static mesh side, we can connect up our water wheel. Moving across to the viewport, you should see your water wheel. It's a beautiful model um, from the Unreal Engine starter pack. So in the event graph, we're gonna look at variables. There's a few components here that we'll need. One of them is obviously the sound that we're going to play, which is gonna create a, an empty meta sound uh, source slot for that. And then across from that, once we compile, you can see we can set up our sound to play with our rotation sound, which you don't need to worry about too much right now. We're not gonna be playing that right in this tutorial. More variables we will need, we will, we will need rotation speed so that you can change the, uh, the, the speed of the component that's rotating just so you can kind of tweak that the way that you'd like, which is just going to be a float variable. There's a few other ones that we'll need as well in that we will also need uh, the audio rotation value, which is how much uh, the ro in degrees the, the value has been rotated over time. Now, I like to preface things with audio or AU just to make sure that uh, other programmers see that this is something that we're using. It is connected up uh, to audio itself, although this will be a very audio centric blueprint anyway. So after that, we're going to want to create a function, which I'm just going to call add rotation. And this function is going to be handling the movement and the calculations of the variables. So we do need an input, which will be the delta seconds um, of this. And across from that, we will also want to make sure that the delta seconds can be tied in from the event tick. Now, if I click and drag out rotation speed, I'll get this little pop up, it says get or set. And you can kind of modify this by holding down control for gets or alt for sets, just so you don't, you can kind of skip that window. I'm gonna multiply the delta seconds by the rotation speed um, to set up one of my local variables that I'll be using, which is just a variable that only happens inside the function. Here, we're gonna have the added rotation value that we will be calculating and using later on to rotate the actual object in itself. Now, this gives us a degree of modularity when we connect this up in that we can change the, mod, the rotation speed and reuse the rotation value uh, later on in the function as opposed to uh, not making a variable out of it. So this is the first part of our collective uh, blueprint that's gonna have, handle quite a bit of logic. Um, so we need to move on to calculating the audio rotation value in degrees. So I'm gonna click and drag that out. And again, I'm gonna skip this little extra window by holding control when I click and drag it out to get the get. And I've got to look at how I can uh, create this value in degrees. Now, the way I'm gonna do that is use our added rotation value that we're gonna have here, add those two together, and then modulo it by 360 so that when we do go around, because it is gonna keep going up and up forever, we're going to modulate that into uh, 360. So, you know, one degree past or 721 degrees is the same as one degree. I'm going to set uh, the new calculation of this for the audio rotation value degrees up as the audio rotation value, which gives us uh, the, the number that we'll be looking for. Now, there's some complicated behavior here. So I like to put a little box or a little comment by 
type in the C key um, around highlighted objects. And then I can sort of type out parts of what the blueprint is uh, to communicate to other team members or to, to communicate to future me when I forget how to do this. So, <laughs> which that happens a lot. So this part is the calculation. And so the first part is getting our uh, rotation speed and the added rotation value that we will need to add on top of uh, the local rotation to make that happen. So now that we've created uh, these two parts, we need to do the, the actual rotation of the, uh, of the object itself, of the static mesh itself. Uh, so I'm gonna move over here and make a new area here where I will uh, pull off and create our add rotation, our add local rotation um, to our static mesh. Now, if I don't add it to the static mesh, uh, I will need to plug in a static mesh here. So this static mesh is the same thing as the static mesh component that's on the uh, object to begin with. Now you can see here, when I look at the uh, rotation, there isn't any rotation. Um, so we will need to use our rotation value, which is the value we sort of pre-calculated uh, to do our rotation. I'm gonna use a rotator, disconnect it from the X, connect it back up to the Y, because otherwise it'd spin the wrong way, which would be funny, but not the point um, in, in a lot of ways. So. I'm going to connect that up, um, box that and explain that to future me as well, um, just so it's really clear. And I think this is a good step when looking at this in, uh, in Blueprints itself. Now, once we've done this, uh, this is most of our function. This is most of what we need to uh, connect up to make a thing spin. So we should now look to connect it up to make it spin. Um, because we'll be able to use these values, the rotation value being local and the audio rotation value degrees to pipe through to our meta sounds, which won't be in this lesson, but it'll be in the next lesson uh, for sending values through. So nothing will happen if I hit play here because I haven't connected up. So I'm gonna go through and connect it up to the event tick to pass those delta seconds through and uh, be able to use that. Um, now this will start rotating the object itself, but I probably also want to go through and connect up the parameters to the MetaSound. So when I try and connect this MetaSound parameter up, the context sen sensitivity of, uh, of Unreal sort of fights against me here. So what we want to do is pull off of the sound to play, which is the MetaSound source, and we will get the right, um, get the right contexts there. So we're going to set up the float parameter. I'm gonna call this rotation. Um, we're not gonna cover this right now, but we will cover it in future. And of course, I also need to pass in the value in degrees, which is that value we calculated earlier as well. So we have something that connects this up. I wanna print this out just to show you really clearly uh, what's what's happening here um, and where, you know, checking, checking values, because you might've seen things when you're trying to do rotations that have some uh, really weird values, like negative 90 to 90 or 270 to 11. So, you know, a bit weird. I'm gonna drop in this rotator component here uh, into the scene. And you can see when I'm looking through, I don't see rotation speed and I don't see the meta sounds that I'd like to change. And I want to be able to change these. So the reason this is, is they're like private variables. Um, we want to click the, little, uh, click the little I to show them in the editor, which is back inside. So you can see now that I've done that, I set my rotation speed to 10 just as a starting point and hit play. And I get hello written a lot of times, which is a thing, uh, but not what we're looking for. The reason there is I've hooked up the value to duration instead of the string. So connecting that up now, we're going to print what the value is, although you'll also see it in the inspector on the right, um, just in the details panel uh, there as well. So you can see my numbers on the left are coursing all the way up, which is super exciting. So now it's time to jump into Reaper and design some sounds. I'm gonna go through and find a few parts of the wheel that I like here. Um, there's a couple of sort of metal bolts and plates and wood elements and um, some other elements there. And, and the main thing I'd probably like to cover is this RX trick. Now, when you're looking through a number of RX, uh, RX audio files or, or loops or something like that, you might find some elements that kind of poke out, especially because this is a big, big water wheel. What I like to do is highlight a region that does not poke out and copy that region. And then when I've got that region, I can kind of right click on 
another region and paste uh, to selection. And what that will do is just kind of smush the, the spectral um, sort of copy paste over the top. And, and I can get rid of some of these pokey um, sort of elements that will give away that it's a loop. Um, and it's a way we can get a little bit of mileage out of our loops. It's a really handy technique for getting a little bit of variation without feeling like you're uh, needing to record a lot of audio. And it's a bit of a sneaky way to get uh, let sort of shorter audio clips that get less fatiguing over time. So with a, with a quick pass through here, you can see I'm just highlighting a region of RX, copying it. Sometimes I highlight different regions because I don't want to copy paste exactly the same reason over uh, sorry same region over and over again um and sometimes if you see i can copy paste too much or too long and then that'll drop out so you can only really have uh sections because it is doing a, a very very rudimentary copy and paste even though it looks like you're looking into hell itself to work this out but with this copy paste it's a lot better than denoising a lot of the time because we're using the same audio file um so i'm gonna go through and do this for a couple of loops there's quite a few sections here um so there's the cogs inside the the house there's the the turning metal sort of bit to work with the sort of low groany metal metallic thing and then there's obviously just the turning of the wheel itself. Now I won't cover the water sounds here just because I wanna keep that really pure, but I will probably put a emitter on the water. So the only other thing to really cover here is some uh, Reaper stuff if you haven't seen it before. Using the um, greater than, less than signs, you can kind of replace audio. So I have uh, open space underscore and that'll replace that. Now this is only part of the equation um, and I want to kind of end it here for right now because the video is already getting quite long to get through. There's a lot that goes on in blueprinting and I think this is a, a component that you'll really want to add to your systems uh, just to show yourself that you can make these gameplay behaviors and maybe the turning of the water wheel will kind of tick over and uh, when it hits 90 degrees, we'll get one kind of groan and then maybe as it does a full circulation, we'll get a different kind of groan and we're gonna make a water wheel that is not just an ambient sound source, but actually communicate something to the player. I have to say a really special thank you to Chris Zuko. Uh, I was on Twitter complaining about Quaternions and uh, he decided to jump in and show me how it's done, show, show me how I could use some variables. And part of the blueprint here is very directly derived from the work that he uh, whipped up to show me uh, a way that I could avoid some of the Quaternions I was using. So it's a really, really big help. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, you can catch up with me at Dweaver Audio on Twitter, uh, or you can uh, catch up in the comments below. Obviously, like and subscribe to the video. I've uh, been really happy to see people responding really well to these. I will aim to get the next part of this, which is using some of the sound design we've created and some of the uh, calculations for the rotations going into meta sounds and doing a, a kind of a longer video on that. Um, but I just had too many ideas that I wanted to cover that wouldn't really fit in one single video. So thank you so much and I will see you next time.